Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you. Russia's deputy PM meets India's Foreign Minister Jay Shankar to boost ties. Chinese national arrested on blasphemy charges in Pakistan. And Apple opens first India store as fans show off vintage devices, take selfies. Now for all the details, Russia's Deputy PM Denis Mantorov and India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Tuesday held a meeting of the Intergovernmental Commission in New Delhi to boost bilateral ties. The two leaders discussed cooperation including in trade, finance, industry, education and culture, a statement said. Mantorov also held talks with India's Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman later in the day. India has not criticized Russia's invasion of Ukraine, but has called for a peaceful resolution of the conflict through dialogue. Russia, traditional defense equipment supplier, has now also become India's top supplier of crude oil. Overall, Indian imports from Russia have increased almost fourfold to over $46 billion in the year to March 31st. And India has reached the key milestone of hosting over 100 meetings in the run-up to the 18th summit of the G20. The gathering of the agricultural chief scientist, which kick-started on Monday in Varanasi City, is the 100th meeting under India's G20 presidency. India has so far held G20 meetings in 41 cities across the country, hosting over 12,000 delegates. India is set to host the annual G20 summit in New Delhi in September. PM Modi said India has worked to further global good and create a better planet. Uh, there has been uh, some very good uh, discussions in most of the meetings. We have made good progress on several important issues of priority to us. And uh, as we proceed further, I think uh, we will be seeing more of the outcomes of some of these meetings. Well, amid the ongoing executive judiciary tussle, Pakistan government on Monday rejected the demand for provision of 21 billion rupees as grant to the election commission for holding snap polls, nullifying the Supreme Court's directive. Law Minister Azam Nazir Tarar in a parliament motion defended the poll body's earlier decision to delay the elections till October, owing to economic and security situation in the country. Taking a dig at opposition PDI chief Imran Khan, he said holding elections again and again because of the ego of one person was not an appropriate thing to do. Meanwhile, PDI leader Fawad Chaudhary has demanded the top court to initiate contempt proceedings against the ruling coalition over the decision. Such a parliament can lay the foundation of a fascist government, but it cannot have anything to do with the democratic system, he said. A Chinese national has become the latest victim of Pakistan's strict blasphemy laws. Reports suggest Tian, who worked at the Dasu Hydropower Project in Kohistan, has been taken into police custody after he allegedly insulted Islam and its prophet in a heated argument. A conviction for blasphemy carries death penalty. Security personnel remained tight-lipped about his place of detention, but reports suggested he was moved to Islamabad on board a helicopter on Monday evening. Blasphemy is a hugely sensitive issue in Pakistan as even rumors can incite lynch mobs and deadly violence. Rights groups say the accusations are often used to intimidate religious minorities and settle personal scores. Well, the Taliban authorities in Afghanistan have ordered the closure of education centers and institutes supported by non-governmental groups in Kandahar province until further notice. Reports suggest the centers are mostly for girls who are banned from going to school beyond sixth grade. Despite initial promises of a more moderate rule than during their previous stint in power in the 1990s, the Taliban have imposed harsh measures since taking over the country in 2021. Last month, an education activist, Mathieu Lavesa, hailing from Kandahar, was also arrested by Taliban forces who was campaigning for girls' right to study. Taliban officials have said they respect women's rights in line with their strict interpretation of the Islamic law. And Nepal's Kathmandu value has remained in the top 10 most polluted cities in the world. The city continues to remain shrouded in thick smog with experts saying the conditions are unlikely to improve in the coming days. Kathmandu, the capital city of Nepal, 
continues to remain shrouded in thick smog that has caused reduced visibility in the valley. The capital city has remained in the top 10 most polluted cities, with AQI surpassing the 190 mark on Sunday. According to the country's meteorological forecasting division, due to lack of rainfall and wildfires in most parts of the country, the conditions are most unlikely to improve in the coming days. Government authorities have advised the public to wear a face mask to mitigate the possible impact of air pollution. Dust from construction works, exhaust from old poorly maintained vehicles and smoke from coal burning brick kilns blend in a murky haze that hangs over Kathmandu city, raising the risk of cancer, stroke asthma and high blood pressure, experts say. And about 300 people lined up at Apple store in Mumbai on Tuesday as fans took selfies with Chief Executive Tim Cook who inaugurated the first retail store run by the company in India. Take a look. Chief Executive of Apple, Tim Cook, on Tuesday inaugurated the company's first store called Apple BKC in India's financial city, Mumbai. Cook was seen waving to customers and opening the store's doors as employees clapped and cheered. He also greeted customers who visited the store and posed for selfies with some of them. People gathered from across the nation, hoping to be among the first to enter the store. Some fans queued outside from the previous night to get their hands on Apple products, even though they are available online in India. Having Tim Cook's signature on it, I'm on cloud nine right now. I was so happy when I saw it and I couldn't believe my eyes that Tim Cook's actually here signing it in person. A second store in the capital New Delhi is set to open on Thursday and Cook is expected to meet Prime Minister Narendra Modi later this week. As Apple pushes to make India a bigger manufacturing base, some of its products, including iPhones, are being assembled in the country. It also plans to assemble iPads and AirPods in India. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.